What's up guys? So one of the things that I never really liked about the Discovery front bumper was there was just a lot of uh, just openness for the axle and the steering components and things like that. Um, when I built my, my Jeep Wrangler bumper, I actually integrated a steel skid plate into the design and this one just didn't have it. Um, if we look, we look at the Defender, it's got this nice skid plate that comes factory, or at least mine came factory, um, that does offer you know quite a bit of protection, but then when we swing over here, that's just a lot of exposure to a lot of things. So, so what I did was yesterday, I created this template uh, out of cardboard, and it's gonna be kind of a hybrid solution, as you'll see. So these steel wings here are going to mount to the actual bumper itself. And then you'll see there's gonna be a little bit that's unsupported down here, but. What Let me see if I can do this one-handed. So the front mount, you can see, mounts to, uh, it's gonna be tough. The front mount's gonna bolt to the front of the actual bumper and it's gonna thread into that front plate. And then on the sides, the wings themselves kind of come in like this. And you can see that they stick back a little bit further and that's to give it a little bit more protection. And I hope that that's gonna work out okay. So let's get to uh, cutting that steel and then hopefully I can go to my friend's house and do the actual welding today. When I chew it up like that, they kind of get stuck together. So while they're somewhat stuck together, I'm gonna drill a tiny 1 8 inch hole right through the middle so that each of the speed square sides are even. So this is gonna be the base of the, um, the actual plate. And I'm doing this now while the drill's warming up and getting charged. So I'm gonna find the center line uh, cross hatches for each direction. 
and then um, start marking off my cut lines and then also where I'm going to put the speed holes for breathability. So this top line that I just drew out here, that's gonna be a cut line. So basically I'm gonna take the grinder and score it down to maybe an eighth of an inch, bend this up so it has a, a face that I can uh, screw through. And um, I'm gonna either have to, I'm gonna have to backfill it with some welds once I get the TIG welder set up. But for temporarily, even with the crease in it right here, it should be okay. And then on the template, I put in a, uh, another crease to kind of even out at the two inch mark. So I'm going to draw that up just in case I do want to put that in later. Um, I'll have a, a good, a good place to do that. I've already done the measurements. So. So the next step is I'm using, um, these tiny screws. Let's see if we can show it to you. These are uh, metric stainless. So I'm going to countersink these in. The way I have it designed right now, I've got five for the front and then three for each side. So uh, I need to figure out where those holes are gonna go so that I can get those drilled when the drill comes back to life. And then, um, and then start figuring out where the speed holes are gonna go in situ. So how I like to do these is I kind of like to set it out, kind of get an idea of where it's at. Um, I know I'm gonna do five across the top and probably four across the bottom is what I'm thinking. So just trying to figure out where uh, that math best, best works out, sorry. All right, so I did all this off camera because you guys didn't really want to see me doing a bunch of weird math and stuff like that, me going back and forth between standard and metric. But basically what I have is I have the five holes punched in, spaced evenly out, and then I've got five speed holes or airflow holes across the top, again punched out, and then the four lower ones as well. So I guess the next step while we're waiting on the drill to get um, charged is to draw a square line, like a V across this, because this is actually gonna be full. What we're looking at right now is we're looking at the inside. So this is gonna get folded up uh, in this manner. And that's where I'm gonna be at a sort of a stopping point um, until I can get some of the, some of the drills. I may, I may try to use what I can on that battery to get these drilled while it's flat because that would be much easier. And then, and then I'll probably score um, these. I'll wait till the 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 drill is fully charged, and um, probably go over to my buddy's house and get that welded up. Of course, I hopefully these, I can get these speed squares going too. So that's where we're at. all the pilot holes are drilled I'm gonna leave these up top at the what oops I forgot that one at the 1 8 inch just so that it's a little bit more precise when I clamp everything in I can you know start my drill process there and have the marks on the actual bumper because the bumper piece is gonna be what's tapped so I need to get that really really precise and straight across the front since it's the first thing you'll see the rest of them I just kind of countersunk them so that the um, the hole saw which I'm not using this one I'm using the bigger one but um, can go in here and just kind of center up and everything. So let's see how this goes. So basically I tried a brief experiment off camera. Um, what I'm trying to do is just machine a groove down this edge right here. I'm trying to do it with this really dull circular saw blade, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I just need to get it enough that I can bend it, I think.
so obviously this makes a massive, massive mess all over everything. So um, I got these lines scored. They're not 100% perfect. I did use that fence right there. Um, this one is a little deeper than I hoped for, <laughs> quite a bit deeper. That's the back piece on the bottom. And this piece here, well, let's see, it's not much better, but um, let's get these big holes, let's get this place cleaned up first, and then let's get these big holes drilled in, and then we'll start bending everything up. through and get all of these I wanted to make sure that this line worked first um, before I even did this because there's no reason to screw out you know what nine holes for if it's only gonna mess up so I think I think we're in a good pretty good spot with both of these again these are a little deeper so these are definitely have to be backfilled with some TIG weld but um, but yeah let's get to going on this one So I did all the welding at my friend's house. Um, it was a little bit of a, she had like all of her stuff in there that they're doing a remodel and things like that. So I had to be real careful not to make sparks and things like that fly. So because of that, I was in a little bit of a rush. I was trying to get in and trying to get out. And um, yeah, I made a mistake, obviously, um, or honestly rather made a mistake. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that, but I'm kind of at a stopping point right now because the weather is about to turn to a freezing blizzard-ish for, uh, at least for Texas anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna do what I can and then uh, correct the mistake, but let's look at what I did. So I got this part welded in nicely. Um, needs some cleanup for sure, but this is kind of the general idea. We need to smooth that out, round this off a little bit. And this right here is where the it's gonna the plate is gonna bolt to. Now when we come to the other side, this is the piece I made in a little bit of a rush. Obviously, it's flipped to the wrong side. So I'm debating whether I want to cut this off and try to reuse the triangle piece or um what exactly I want to do with it or not. It's probably the same amount of work either way with less expense, but uh, I'm going to get started on the plate now. it guys um, I drilled tons of holes broke tons of drill bits going through that front bumper uh, which caused a lot of delays I was running around to hardware stores um, but yeah that's it I mean I made that one mistake that I mentioned earlier and I'll take you through a little bit of a close-up and show you what I did it's not hundred percent complete yet but I think I'm gonna call this the uh, the end of the video after I uh, show you around so here's the the front of it I use let's see if we can get this I use countersunk six millimeter bolts uh, five of them across the front. I think it looks pretty good. I may go back in and put an, another three or four rather just to 
Well, I have them. It's just the, uh, I'm kind of tired of drilling. I mean, obviously lots of holes through here. Here's how it connects on the inside. I welded this to the actual bumper itself, not the frame. So uh, this is 3 16th, put a speed hole in it just because. Um, yeah, so I like this. I think that the, I was gonna use quarter inch for this, but I think 3 16th is better because I want this to bend if I slam the rock or something real hard. This piece right here, that overhang, I have to bend up, but I wanna do the other side before I put it underneath the jack and bend it. So um, yeah, so I think that that looks pretty good. On this side, however, I messed up and welded the, um, the underside, the part that this bolts to. I messed up and uh, welded that on the wrong side, so I gotta cut that off and redo it, but um, there's no reason to delay the video for that. Um, this piece right here, I had to kind of notch out on the bottom to clear the uh, that shackle mount, but otherwise, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and we'll see you next time.